When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? This loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is isn't always justice. And yet, the dawn is ours before we knew it. And so, we lift our gazes not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We know that to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. We must lay down our arms to reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped, that even as we tired, we tried, that we'll forever be tied together, victorious, not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rebuild reconcile and recover, and our people will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. There is always light, if we are brave enough to see Hello, my name is Ron Jokey. I've been a part of the St. Joan of Arc Prayer Partners since that ministry started in the 90s. In those years, I've listened to and worked with many inspired and creative voices who have been a prayerful presence in the life of this community. My own prayer life has been immeasurably enriched as I've prayed and worshiped with you. In our gospel reading today, Jesus is transfigured. He invites us to experience our own transfiguration, to climb that mountain with him, and to be transformed. We might say, after all that we've experienced in the last year of pandemic, racial and political unrest, tragedy upon tragedy, I don't really want to climb I don't really want to take another risk to take that uncertain path. And for what return? But remember that our climbing companion is a trusty guide who's got our back and anticipates our pitfalls if we will but join him. 
One of the ways that we can say yes to Jesus' invitation is by attending our online Lenten prayer service of reconciliation, recognizing where we and our society have gone astray, seeking forgiveness and healing, while with God's help, committing to be changed and to be change makers. Please join the prayer partners, Father Jim DeBreaker and SJA musicians for our Lenten Reconciliation Service beginning on Wednesday, March 3rd at 7 p.m. The service will be available after that for most of Lent on the St. Joan of Arc website at stjoan.com. Today is the second Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Father Jim DeBreaker. We welcome you wherever you are on your journey. Thank you, Ron. And thank you, um, Elsie Rudolph, who's our reader today. And uh, for Don, Dan, excuse me, Dan Chenard, and Richard Green for our musicians who are actually with us in person today, which is always, a, I think, a blessing. As we said, today is the second Sunday of Lent, and as always, it is celebrating the transfiguration of the Lord. We'll talk about that later. But a symbol and a sign that we are always accompanying on our journey and that we have that blessing from the Father that this Jesus is his Son with whom he is well pleased. Let us begin as we always do in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So as we begin our celebration, let us call to mind our need for God's graces, God's goodness, God's forgiveness as we start another week. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we rejoice to behold your glory. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took a knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked out, he spied a ram and caught it by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. I swear by myself, declares the Lord, 
that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. Our responsorial psalm is, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant the son of your handmaid, you have loosed my bonds. To you I will offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter to, of Paul to the Romans. Sisters and brothers, if God is for us, who can be against us? The only one who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for all of us. How will God not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who is also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. This, my family, is God's word to us. Thank you, God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves. There in their presence he was transfigured. His clothes became dazzlingly white, whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them. Elijah appeared to them with Moses and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, I said, it is a wonderful for us to be here. So let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was so frightened he didn't know what he was saying. And a cloud came covering them in shadow, and there was a voice from the cloud. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Then suddenly they looked around, and they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. As we said before, the second Sunday of Lent is always the story of the Transfiguration. And it, it has a number of, um, it's doing a number of things for us being in its position in the second week. First of all, it's telling us th things, good things aren't going to happen. He is going to die, and which is probably news to the disciples. You know, they just saw this wonderful thing. Now he tells them he's going to die. So it's being prophetic about what's happening in the future. But at the same time, it's on that journey. And Mark's gospel, as we've talked about before, seems to be like uh, it is a journey. It's just from, from his being baptized at the Jordan and then rushing towards Jerusalem where he's going to die and fulfill his destiny as being those, that person who is going to die for his people. But on the way, they have this little episode. 
And I think it's for the disciples. It's for the disciples to say, this guy is really who you think he is. He is God come to earth. He is someone special. And so it's kind of a, on the road to what to the resurrection, it's kind of a chance for them to feel reassured that they aren't fools for following this guy, that he really is who, he, who they think he is. So for us, it's a sign, it's, it's also a sign for us who need hope, who need a, a chance to say that, especially in our time right now where everything's so messed up, that there's always hope, that God is with us. You know, the other day, someone on, on one of the news programs started saying, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but then relayed all the statistics to show that, in all honesty, the COVID crisis is not over, but it's getting better. There are good signs that things are, that the, the um, vaccine is working, that people, because we no longer, we don't, we've gotten through the holidays, that, that spike has gone down, and there's less, what do you call it, virus in the community. And they said, now forget I said that because they don't want you to know that because they're afraid you'll go back to doing the stupid things that you do, which is a story of humanity. But there's always hope. There's always a chance that things are going to get better and the chance that we have to create those, those situations by our wise decisions, by do, trying to do the right thing, whether it be for health with the virus or the health for our, for our bodies and our minds. That's kind of why we have this invitation for our reconciliation service, because we need a little time off, a little stopping off point to look at ourselves and say, what is it I need to do to be that person I most want to be? I'm a little sorry for Elsie today that she had to get the other reading, that one about Abraham sacrificing his son. It's always a question is why they include that. I mean, pretty obviously, if you know ch church um, theologians, they see that precursor of Abraham at sacrificing his son as Jesus offering his life for us. But there's a, quite a difference. The difference is Jesus is not being forced by his father. He is offering himself freely on our behalf. And you know, one of the questions we always ask is, Jesus really have to die to make things right? And that's a question we can ask Jesus when we meet him face to face. Or was it the fact that we didn't change, that we did not become the people he wanted us to be, and he had to offer himself as both the sign and as the actual offering for forgiveness? But that story of Abraham is also kind of shocking because I, I love reading the, the rabbis when they argue amongst themselves in, in the commentary on the Talmud. And it's funny how they go because they go, you know, if you ever read that, they're kind of fun to read because they, they don't hold any punches. They go right after each other in their arguments. And one person will say, one rabbi says, well, he knew, Abraham knew darn well that God had made the promise never to ask for a human sacrifice. And so Abraham's mistake and his faithfulness wasn't so much that he obeyed God, but they didn't argue with God. Had he been a true prophet, a true um, patriarch, he would argue with God and say, God, you cannot go against your own words. I will not offer my son because I'd be breaking your commandment. And the other rabbis, oh, no, 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 rabbi, whatever your name is. You're an idiot. Of course he had to prove that he could trust this man. Of course he had to prove that he was faithful, that he was the person that God could have complete trust in. And so he, he fulfilled it out of faith and was the right thing to do. And they go back and forth. They go back and forth arguing and arguing and arguing. But there's a kind of a modern interpretation, which is kind of setting up the sacrifice of Abraham as a moment to reflect. And the reflection that this rabbi sent out is, we say what a terrible person Abraham was, that he didn't argue for his son on, on his behalf to God when he could have. I mean, every good prophet always argues with God as part of a definition of a prophet. And we think, what a terrible man he was. But then what this particular rabbi said, he says, think, reflect on how many times do parents sacrifice their children? How many of them send their children off to war while they sit at home and say, go die for us to defend us? How many times do we do stupid things that put ourselves at risk that kill our children and other children because we do not do the wise thing or we think we're so important 
that it's worth sacrificing those who are closest to us. And it becomes kind of a reflection on violence. Where is the root of violence? Where is the root of destruction? The root of destruction is when we think only of ourselves, even to the point that we destroy those who we say we love. So it also becomes a reflection on what it means to, for peace. We're in a society now that seems to be so selfish. We say, you know, I mean, don't want to get too political, but you say, oh, there's no such thing as global warning. Don't worry about it. We'll sacrifice the next generation because we don't want to change. We don't want to do what we don't want to do. But how about, you know, why are we giving all these rights away? We're losing our rights. Why do those people have rights? Why should I respect them? I have to protect myself and take care of myself. I don't care what happens to those people. We have a tendency to sacrifice others on our behalf all the time. And so it's, it's a real challenge to say, why are you doing what you are doing and asking others to do it? Do it yourself. Maybe we change if we thought, well, maybe if I fought, I might die. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Or, you know, why am I really doing this? Why am I causing pain to other people? Taking responsibility. When we look at Jesus, he knew exactly what he was getting into. He did not offer other people. He went forward and said, this is what I believe. This is how I'm going to act. This is how I'm going to stand up for the people I love. I'm going to work for justice. I'm going to work for the people who are underprivileged. There are the people who are scorned. I am going to raise them up. And I don't care what you do to me, but I'm going to stand by that message. That's why we say his message is redemptive, as is any time someone offers himself to do the right thing, whether it be a Gandhi, a Martin Luther King, or John Lewis, any of those people who go into good trouble, not to offer other people first, but to say, this is what I believe. If you want to follow after me, because I cannot do anything but what is the right thing to do. So I have to ask yourselves, who have we sacrificed on our own behalf? Today, Jesus goes up the mountaintop and lets the disciples know who he truly is to give them strength for the journey, and so they recognize what happens when you truly stand for what you believe. It may end up in your death, but there's always a resurrection because you have changed the way the world has to see. And you're not for someone else to do it. So today is a day in which we have the power and the hope and we have the message and the question how are we passing on to our generations what we've received? Let us together now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, and he ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us now ask our prayers, our petitions, for this community, for the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus taught us by his example that God's love knows no bounds. Holy One, transfigure your church into a place of true welcome to all people, especially those living on the margins of society and those who are treated unjustly because of the color of their skin, their national origin, their faith tradition, or sexual orientation. Let us pray to God. Lord, Lord. Hear our prayer. Jesus showed us that seeking national unity does not mean compromising our faith values. 
transform our country's political divide into a union built on the common good with justice for all. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you created our beautiful planet and gave us power to be wise stewards. Transition our use of what hurts our planet to what heals it. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayer. In Abraham, we have an example of great trust in you, our God. Instill in us the faith of Abraham that you will guide us through the pandemic, economic downturn, and resulting afflictions to a place of safety and opportunity for all. Help us to know that we can not only endure, but thrive when we all contribute our fair share, especially those of us with privilege and resources. Let us pray to God. Lord. And we ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen.
and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours, that they may be acceptable to God in heaven. May the Lord have the Praise and glory of his name. Good and good law, church. May this sacrifice, the Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Easter festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our doing our salvation, always ever to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, mighty eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory. Show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before you, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the font of all holiness. Let your Holy Spirit come upon these gifts like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willing to his passion and taking bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was done, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. We poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. Humbly pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bringing the folk to charity together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people that your son has gained for you. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome and light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. With confidence now, let us pray that prayer which our Savior gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace is to grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the coming, wait, excuse me, wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. We ask him not to let our sins on the faith of the church and grant to us the peace and unity of his kingdom where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And this is the Lamb of God. This is Jesus Christ. Happy are we to be called with supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. celebrators with us today will receive communion once Mass is ended so we keep safe distances. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, Let's pray our peace prayer together. O oh God of light, in your image we are created. In your grace we are restored. In your community we are loved. In your spirit we are called. Help us to reflect your light of love and grace in this world where we live. Amen. Once again, thank you for being here, celebrating with us the second Sunday of Lent. I'd also like, of course, to thank you for um, your continued contributions of food. It's always a delight to walk through the entryway and see food piled up almost chest high, and then another, another big bunch of it in the um, Welcome Center. And it is appreciated, and thank you for what you do. Thank you also for your generous financial support, which is keeping us going during these times, and hopefully, as things are starting to look better, that we can look forward sometime, maybe not in the near future, but with an eyesight of coming together once again as a community. i also like to thank Ron and Elsie and, uh, of course, Dan and uh, Richard. i also like to thank our online musicians, uh, Tommy and... Barbara Ellen and Deb Harley and Tim Rail and Seth Boyd, Terry Coates and, and the SJA Choir for the beauty they add to our services. It's, it's important and it's uh, much appreciated. Also, I don't want to forget Jordan Headland, who is doing sound today. And Jordan, thank you for being here, as well as our other um, sound technicians and videographers. I also just uh, invite you once again to attend our um, online uh, reconciliation service, which will be online from uh, Wednesday on, I believe. And tune into that, and it's time to kind of refresh your soul and refresh your minds and hearts. So let us ask for God's blessing. Bless your faith, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. Keep them faithful. Faith of the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain the glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Also forgot to thank um, Ross uh, for making sure that everything stayed sanitary between our readings. You didn't see it, but he was up here Every time someone sat down, scrubbed down the things to make sure we didn't pass on our germs. So thanks, Ross. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. Amen.